Hi everyone and welcome to Scraps and Ink. Today I'm very excited to showcase a new technique I came up with, which is kind of a layered dimensional heat embossing technique. I'm going to be working with some Gina K Designs ink cubes in Blue Lagoon, Blue Raspberry, Blue Denim, and Edible Eggplant. And you can pause the video here if you need to. I'm going to begin on with ink blending on some Bristol Smooth cardstock. And I begin with my lightest layer at the very bottom, and then I work my way all the way to the top. I go over each layer multiple times, and you will see that in this video. By the way, I did speed up this video to about four times the normal speed. I definitely don't ink blend this fast. There are some imperfections in my paper and you'll see it and I'll point it out as the video goes along. But don't worry because with ink blending and heat embossing, these imperfections end up blending a little bit into the background and it kind of gives it a little bit of character. If imperfections in your paper bother you, you can use a mono sand eraser to scrub them out or you can try scratching them with your nail. So I begin with my lightest color and I ink blend into a gradient all the way to the top of my paper. I wanted the paper to look a little bit like a night sky because I was going to give it a snow falling effect. At the very top, I add the edible eggplant color. Off camera, I ended up adding a little bit of black soot distress ink because I really felt like the, the purple just wasn't dark enough. After ink blending my entire panel, I leave it off to the side to dry for approximately three hours. So there, even though the video skips on to the next step, there was some time in between ink blending and heat embossing. Here are the products I used. Do they look familiar? I love this simply simple script sentiment set by Clearly Besotted. And I'll be using some embossing powders by Recollections. They are silver, clear, and snow or white. This Snow Much stamp set by Simon Says Stamp is definitely one of my favorites. I did order their December card kit, so look out for an unboxing, but the snowflakes in the December card kit stamp set can definitely be used with this technique. So I begin by pulling out all of the snowflakes from the stamp set and the larger and smaller circles, which look like snowballs. I first lay them out on my media mat because I initially was going to stamp each snowflake individually, but then I found my larger stamping block and decided to stamp, arrange the, the stamps on the larger block and use that. It makes my job way easier. You can also use a Misty for this technique. You would just have to rotate your card. I use a dry, clean paintbrush to dust off any imperfections on my cardstock with the embossing powder. If the embossing powder gets where you don't want it to be, that's fine. Just wipe it off with a finger, a dry cloth, or a dry paint brush. Also, earlier you saw me pour embossing powder over my panel first. That was just a test. I wanted to make sure that my panel was in fact dry as can be. When I first did this card, the first time I tried it out, my panel wasn't dry enough and I made a lot of mistakes. So here you see me doing the same technique. I powder off my panel. I arrange my stamps on my block and after each color, I always rearrange the stamps on my block. Also, what you don't see off camera is I am cleaning my stamps in between. You don't have to. That's just an extra step that I like to do because it sticks to the block a little bit better. 
So for every embossing color, I powder my panel, stamp, arrange my stamps, stamp them, and heat emboss them. After this, after this color, I jump into the white embossing snowflakes. And then to fill in a little bit of space, I go back in with the clear embossing ink, ink, no, clear embossing powder and stamp out a couple more snowflakes just to fill in the space. The main interest on this card was the clear tone on tone snowflakes at the very back. What I wanted this card to look like was snow falling in the distance where the clear snowflakes were the farthest away snowflakes. The silver was more in the middle, not too far, not too close. And the white was very obviously the snow that was falling closest to your face. I'd like to think I achieved that look. I don't think the video does it justice by any means, but you can kind of get the effect in pictures. And I'll add some more pictures at the very end of this video. So here I'm creating my cardstock, card base out of cardstock. What? Mina Classic Crest 110 pound paper. I cut it down to eight and a half by, no, I cut it down to five and a half by eight. I cut it in half hamburger style. I'm struggling guys. <laughs> And I'm going to fold it in half to create a four and a quarter by five and a half card base. And because I worked so hard on this panel, I didn't want it to go anywhere. So I slathered on the glue and then I adhered it wrong. So that was cool. So I just, no big deal. Pull it off the panel, readjust it. Everything's fine. My sentiment, I ended up heat embossing it off camera but I heat embossed it with the same white that I used on my card panel, just on one fawn black licorice cardstock. My original panel was six and a half by four and a quarter, and I ended up cutting it down to just a little bit smaller than four and a quarter by five and a half. So with the extra strips, I adhered them to the inside of my card. I think it adds a nice touch. Finally, I glued my sentiment down. I didn't say this. I glued my sentiment down with glossy accents because very few glues will actually adhere to heat embossing. And I wanted to make sure that my card did not get ruined if I ended up mailing this. Lastly, I finish up my card with some glossy accents on the front panel. And I do stamp a sentiment on the inside from the same clearly besotted stamp set. It says, sending you love. And I use the Gina K edible eggplant ink to stamp my sentiment on the inside. I just love that purple color. I feel like it really ties everything together. And that's it. Very embossing heavy, but very easy to do as long as you have the time. Thanks again for joining me today, and I hope you have a great day. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and like my video. It really helps me out. Bye!